Welcome back to Lightning GIS. Today we're going to talk about ArcMap geodatabases. Um, this is going to be everything you need to know to be a power user when it comes to geodatabases and why you should be using geodatabases. Okay, so first, what is a geodatabase? A geodatabase is the native data format for editing and managing um, basically all types of data in ArcGIS. Now I know you're probably familiar with shapefiles and unmanaged rasters, the types of rasters you have not in geodatabases, but um, Esri has really built ArcGIS software to be optimized to uh, um, edit and manage data within geodatabases. And all that shapefile stuff and unmanaged raster stuff is just out there for your convenience, but not necessarily to make your life easier. Um, you can think of a geodatabase as a container. I like to think of it as a can, a can where I can put all my data in, put the lid on, and sort of keep it secure and all in one spot. Um, in the figure here, you can see that we have a geodatabase called Precip Project Data, and then there are several layers in here. Um, data, data layers or feature classes in here. Um, so they're all stored in that one geodatabase. Now, there are three types of geodatabase in ArcGIS, enterprise, file, and personal. Most people are going to interact with file geodatabases. Um, some people may have to use personal geodatabases. If you have a really basic ArcGIS for desktop license, that may be the only type you have access to. But uh, most GIS licenses allow you to create and use file geodatabases, so that's what we're going to talk about the rest of this video. If you are limited to personal geodatabases, pretty much everything I'm going to talk about in the rest of the video is still relevant to you. The, the differences between the two, the file and the personal, are really things that are only relevant to more advanced users for the most part. Um, I would like to note that vector data, um, when they're outside of a geodatabase, would be called shapefiles, and vector data inside a geodatabase are called feature classes. Rasters are called rasters, whether they're inside or out, but I want you to understand that a shapefile and a feature class are the same thing, they're just in different places. And similarly, to illustrate that point, you can see that a point shapefile has a green icon, and it's the exact same icon, but only with a gray background when it's inside a geodatabase. So that's the main difference. You can see the icons here for the other types of data that can be stored in geodatabases. All right, so what are the advantages of geodatabases? This is the big one in my mind is it's a more flexible file naming options that you have. You can be a lot more um, creative and use longer file names. And I'll talk in a little bit why I think that is such a big advantage that you should be taking um, advantage of. Um, geodatabases are optimized for storage and performance so that GIS will work faster, geoprocessing will be faster, um, so it will make your GIS life easier. Um, they have few size limitations. Each individual feature class or table can be up to one terabyte in size, and one terabyte is a huge amount of data. Um, and I believe with a little bit of configuration, a file ge geodatabase can hold up to 256 terabytes of data in total. Now, I don't even know anybody who has a computer that's got 256 terabytes on it. That is a huge amount of data. Um, and because they're optimized for storage and performances, um, feature classes from a geodatabase will outperform a shapefile when you're using them in a map or geoprocessing, and the same goes for rasters. Um, if you really want to see all the great reasons to use a geodatabase, check this article out by Colin Childs. I've got a link here. Um, it will give you nine reasons to love geodatabases. All right, so here's some geodatabases do, geodatabase do's. Do use geodatabases to store and organize your data. I already told you why, it's all those advantages. Second, when you interact with geodatabases, use Art Catalog. Only use Art Catalog. Never use anything but Art Catalog. Okay. When you're manipulating, changing, renaming, importing, exporting geodatabases, you must use Art Catalog catalog, period. All right, now we talked about uh, vector files that are outside of geodatabases, the good old shape files. There are still, there is still a time and a place for shape files. First of all, a lot of, a lot of GIS data you download from the internet, it's going to come as a shape file because shape files are basically universal formats that work in almost all GIS applications and even other peripheral applications that aren't strictly GIS but use GIS data or data derived from GIS. So it's, 
It's uh, lots of uses for Shapeup. If you're working with somebody who uses GIS but not ArcGIS, that uses Grass or QGIS or one of the other options out there, or Google Earth, um, they can probably digest a shape file. They may not be able to digest a geodatabase. So what I do is I re recommend that you manage all your data inside geodatabases, and then on those occasions when you need to um, serve data to one of these other applications or to a user who doesn't use ArcGIS, you can just export the layer as a shape file or an unmanaged raster. But otherwise, for your own use or for sharing with other people who use geodatabases, um, you're probably going to want to uh, keep all your data in that geodatabase. All right. Now, I said only ever interact with geodatabases within our catalog. But I do want to show you what a geodatabase looks like in Windows Explorer because you're going to see them there, and I want you to understand what you're seeing. Okay, so a geodatabase in Windows File Explorer looks like a folder, so it's got the yellow folder icon, and then it's got whatever the name of the geodatabase is. That, that's given when you create the geodatabase, and then a .gdb folder. So this is a geodatabase and what it looks like out in the wild west area of your computer on your hard drive. So never open this folder, never double click on this folder and open it up and do anything to the files that are in it. The files that are in that folder are managed in the background by Arc Catalog and Arc Map. So let's take a closer look. Here's a geodatabase called Viewshed Analysis Key.gdb, and I double clicked it like I told you not to and opened it up in Windows File Explorer. And you can see it's got all these weird file names that start with A and have a bunch of zeros and then really long extensions. That same geodatabase opened up in ArcMap looks like this. You can see here's that viewshed analysis key.gdb geodatabase, and it's got all kinds of layers. It's got shape files, polygon shape files, point shape files, and a bunch of rasters in there. They're all stored in that one container. Um, this is why you need to use our catalog. Do not mess with these files in Arc or in Windows File Explorer. Only our catalog knows how to interpret and use these things. If you start to mess with these, you're going to corrupt the geodatabase and you're going to lose all this stuff. It's going to all go away, just like that. Not good. All right, so how do you create a geodatabase? Well, from inside our catalog, because we're always going to use our catalog, uh, pick one of the folders you're connected to, um, and then right-click on that folder, choose New from the context menu, click File Geodatabase, it'll open up another window and ask you to give it a name. There you go, you've done, you've created your geodatabase. Um, if you want to export or delete data from a geodatabase, first of all, let's say you've got a shape file. Here I've got a shape file called MN state boundary dot shape. Um, right click on that, choose export and export it to a geodatabase. When you click to geodatabase, it'll open up a window. You navigate to your geodatabase, find it, go inside, tell it what you want the new name to be inside the geodatabase, click save, and there you go. Um, once you're in a geodatabase, like over here, we're in this precip project data uh, geodatabase. Say we have this precip observations. Um, feature class and we want to get rid of it. Right click on it, click delete, and it will go away. Unless it's open in a map currently. If it's currently open in a map, you're going to have to close the map down first, but then you'll be able to delete it. All right, if you want to import stuff into a geodatabase, so if you want to suck data in, um, you right click on the geodatabase where you want to put the stuff, and then you choose import from the context menu, and then you can import a single feature class like one shape file or multiple shape files. Like you can do a bunch all at once. You can do tables or a bunch of tables, and you can do rasters. Um, so you can import all those directly into the geo database. Um, when you're creating, maybe doing geo processing or other work in GIS where you're creating new new data and new layers. Um, you can save those new layers directly to geodatabases. You don't ever have to make a shapefile you, or, or a new raster. You can just save all that stuff right into a geodatabase. The way you do that is um, where in this, uh, I, this is example I'm using is the IDW interp interpolation tool for the output raster. So this is the new raster being created. Um, you click on the little menu icon or a folder icon here out to the right. Come in, navigate to the geodatabase, 
that you want to save the new data layer in. Double click on that. This takes you to a new window. Put your descriptive file name down here. And you can see I'm using a quite a long file name and I'm a big advocate of this. And I will, um, I will give you a, a short description of why I'm a big believer in the append system of file naming um, in the next slide. I described the append file naming system in a separate video, so I'll leave the detailed explanation for there. But I really recommend that you watch that video and use that file naming system to uh, streamline your GIS um, workflows and troubleshooting. All right, now let's say you've got a geodatabase, you've got layers in there and you want to export them. So from your geodatabase, um, you would right click click export, and then you could export to a shapefile like we were talking about earlier. If you want to export one of your feature classes to share with somebody else as a shapefile because that's a format they can digest in their GIS, that's how you would do it. Right click on the layer from within the geo database. Um, and then, now here's the exception. So far we've said only, only, ever, ever manipulate manage or interact with geodatabases from within our catalog. The exception would be if you want to share your geodatabase with someone, then you do need to go out to Windows File Explorer. Now you're still not going to open up that folder, that .gdb folder. You're not going to open it up. You're not going to do anything to the all those guts in there. You're going to leave all that stuff alone. But if you come out to that folder, so here you can sort of see it over the top, preset project data key uh, version 2020 GDB. I right clicked on that. I use 7-zip to uh, compress files as zip files, but you can use whatever zip file creation tool or, or other compression tool you use. And then I just have to choose from there, add to the, it automatically generates that name, which is fine with me, so I'll go with it, .zip. And choose, click on that, and I've created my uh, zip file. Now I can just send that one zip file to um, my colleague, they can open that up on their computer, uncompress that on their computer, and open it up on uh, their version of ArcMap. So I've got some selected sources here. You can uh, uh, Google these terms to find uh, more information about the things we've talked about. I thank you for your attention today, and I uh, hope that uh, you are a little more comfortable and knowledgeable about geodatabases than you were a few minutes ago.